learned something about uh, your two transfers, uh, Jacob and Kwasi, and I wanted to ask you about both, what they've brought, how they've helped, fit, how they're fitting in, how they're adjusting. I guess we could start with the general question on how they're doing. You know, um, they, they're, first of all, they're good, good kids. Like they've added a lot. They are in the gym a lot, so they added to that culture. They're older. So we've been a young program. We're going to continue even this year to be a little bit of a young program. They've given us some age and some maturity um, and skill set. Like they shoot the ball. Uh, they handle the ball. Um, they know how to play. So, um, you know, they've added, you know, to one to our front court, another one to our back court. They're versatile. They can play multiple positions. But, uh, you know, really good kids. So I'm excited about that part of it. In the year Jacob's been with you, what have you seen change and evolve with him? I mean, his defense, yeah. Um, and he needs to continue in that, that area too. Can always score, talented score, lefty too, a little bit different. Handles the basketball, but he's really learning how to play defense and really share the ball, which I think are two important traits that he's got to continue to, um, you know, continue to work on and, and keep making those two parts of his game. One more for me on this. And Kwasi, he's the old man in the group. He's played the most college basketball by far. How does that help? What kind of wisdom does he impart on these Yeah, guys? he's great. Like, he's uh, got a great uh, approach. He's very mature. He's very appreciative. He's a great teammate. Like, the guys really love him. Um, and uh, he's got a nice way about him on the court, but he's won a lot of basketball games. He's really a self-driven kid. He'll be our best three-point shooter. Um, and he shoots with ease and, and, uh, and is excited about that. But I'm also excited that he can really rebound. So he, he fills two huge voids for us, you know, rebounding and shooting the three, two areas we haven't been great in. No problem. What was that, I guess, experience like for you to have him at the start of his college career and have a chance to have him get him at the end? You know, uh, you know, I went over to England and recruited him. It was awesome, awesome family and uh, came and committed to Stony Brook and uh, we were so good that year that I had to sit him down before the season and say, hey, like, listen, there's a chance um, you're not going to play as much as you'd probably like or I would probably like. And so we talked a lot about, you know, redshirt and getting better and those kind of things. Um, and then, you know, it just progressed this. He's a great student, first of all. He graduated with 3.5 GPA at Stony Brook, so he's a great student and very mature. Um, and then had an opportunity once they had a coaching change and stuff to put his name in the portal and had a ton of schools, as you can imagine. Um, uh, but uh, it's been great, like, to reacquaint myself with him. You know, I knew what a great kid he was, I knew what a quality. I knew he was going to turn out to be a really good player because he had a tremendous work ethic. And uh, he brings that to school, he brings that to the locker room, he brings that to our team. So to see how far he's come now, he really puts the ball down better. He proved his ball handling, he proved his shooting. And he's had a great body, um, but he's got more pop in his legs now. Like he's just gotten better. He wants to play basketball for a long time. He's going to have that opportunity to, to. Uh, which I think is exciting, and I think he's excited about being here at Rutgers. So um, I like that part of it too. Last season, you guys had a nine, maybe ten man rotation at times. Is that the ideal number for you, or do you have a certain? Tell me who's playing well, and I'll tell you the rotation. So I mean, I, I don't know as a coach, you can go tell me who's hurt, tell me who's not, tell me the matchups we're playing. I mean, you know, uh, you know, I've had twelve man rotations. I've had thirteen guys in one year at sort of played. I play a lot of guys anyways, and A, uh, because they earn playing time, but B, the season is a, is a marathon. There's 30 games, so there's flu, there's mono, there's uh, ankle sprains, there's everything. And so your guys got to be prepared for those, uh, those times. If you don't play them, they're not prepared for them. And those things are going to happen. They happen every year to every team. So, uh, you know, I like playing a lot of guys. We don't have a lot of separation, so I think that's a good thing. We have a good competition at every every position, but everyone's going to play. The 11 guys, they're all going to play. Um, I think that's exciting for the guys, too. Now, going back to Kwasi a little bit, being from Europe, he had the advantage of playing in the, the international three-point line. How much of an advantage is that with the NCAA and moving it back this year? You know, I think for him, like, first of all, the line, is, you know, he doesn't even think twice about it. That's been his range for a long time, so um, I think he's made that adjustment as smoothly as, as anybody now. He's even a better shooter now than had been in the past. So. Uh, you know, probably the easiest adjustment was for him. 
as that was the line that he's played all along and stuff he's going to continue you know to play so um, he's made that other guys are making the adjustment I think the biggest thing is the sideline you know there's not as much room and when you you know Ron Harper and you got size 19 feet and some of these guys like there's not a lot of room on those sidelines uh, with, with the line being pushed back so that that was one thing that really hurt us in in Europe, we stepped out of bounds a lot. So as you're trying to get your feet work uh, ready to play, you don't realize there's not as much room now, you know, before you hit that sideline. So we probably have seen that, and it's been the biggest adjustment, you know, guys stepping out of bounds, uh, you know, trying to get in, into the corner threes, you know. So uh, Quasi has no problem with that. He's ready to launch, uh, no matter where his feet are. I know you mentioned in the past that guys think you can score with, uh, on the defensive end of the court. Yeah, we're not good right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll get better though. Guys are willing workers, and you know, you know, we got a ways to go in those areas, and, and uh, we'll continue, you know, to get better. We get you know a couple newcomers, we got to figure it out a little bit, and some of the veteran guys got to do a great job because we have to be a really good defensive team, and we have a chance to be. We're the longest that we've ever been lengthwise. Every guy is, is long and lengthy and, and athletic, so we should have a chance to be real good. But right now, you know, yeah, we're not, we're not where we need to be. Certainly for the schedule we're going to be playing. You mentioned that uh, Yaboa and Young are the two a bit older guys, and I know that the team is older this year than last year. How do you think that's going to change the culture in the locker room this year? Yeah, no, I think it's always good when you're old, you know, older. Even our young guys have logged a lot of minutes, so this will be the first time, you know, our sophomores played a lot of minutes last year as freshmen, so, um, and our juniors have logged a lot of minutes, and, you know, Quasi's logged a lot of minutes, and, and Jacob Young played a lot of minutes at, you know, Texas his first couple of years, too, so uh, I think anytime you have older guys, it just, it just helps. They've been through the wars um, from really good programs, too, you know, Texas is a good program, obviously, and um, Stony Brook a good program. And, you know, if you throw Paul Mulcahy in there, a real good winning program at Gil St. Bernard. So, you know, got some guys that have won a lot and, and have gotten older. And, you know, I like our locker room right now. I like our leadership. Gio's been great. And Chad Carter brings a dimension, too. You know, he's an older guy that's that's been around a little bit, too. So, um, you know, I like that. And I like being different in that area as opposed to being young, uh, you know, with our captains. It's been over two weeks since practice number one. What is like the number one thing you've learned from your team since then? Yeah, we're competitive. You know, that's what I've, we got. We got guys, you know, everyone can make a case. If you show up at practice today, you're gonna say, I like this guy, this guy, this guy. And I'll say, if you were here yesterday, you'd like that guy, that guy, and that guy. So um, we, we, got, we got more depth. We have more competition in practice because they have to be better. Knock on wood, we've stayed healthy. So that's a huge part of this thing. But, uh, you know, and after two weeks, we got a long way to go. We shoot the ball better, we handle it and pass it better, but we, we got a lot, a lot of work to do. And this is always the nervous time of the year because we're under a month now before we play and we're not ready to play right now. So we got a lot, of, a lot to do in a short period of time. When do you, I guess, switch from preparing for a game week to so I know a lot of those times like football, they start practicing, they're thinking about game one immediately. Like when do you kind of begin to think? Yeah, I mean, you're always thinking, you know, our games come fast and furious, so it's a little bit different. I wish I had a week in between every game, too. So um, we don't have any of that luxury, especially when we start that Pittsburgh stretch, and then what is it, Michigan State, Kevin, and then it's Wisconsin, Wisconsin and then it's Seton Hall. Like, what we, 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 and I say, you play such different styles in basketball. Michigan State runs the most, and then the next game you play the team that walks the ball up the most. So a lot of your prep time is so different for all the teams you play. But, um, you know, we'll start preparing, you, you know, in a lot of ways we're preparing for a lot of our games right now by putting in all the different things that we need to have in place that we're going to see in the you know, first month of the season. So um, you're always preparing, but right now I'm preparing my own team, you know, to, to do the things that I want them to do. And then, uh, you know, we'll start getting to more specifics as we get closer to them, or closer to playing those teams. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.